Good day, everyone. We're thankful to be here with you today online to share some word with you. We wish you the best in this time of trouble and chaos that everyone is experiencing. And we believe God to help see us through it. Amen. I want to talk to you today on the thought of thriving and not just surviving. Amen. It is absolutely God's will that in a time like this, the chaos everyone's dealing with, the troublesome times, the fear, everything that's going on, it is God's will that we are not just trying as his children to survive, but he wants us absolutely to thrive through all of it. Amen. We're going to go to the word of God today in Psalms 22 and 3. And if you want to also get 2 Corinthians 3 and 17. Psalms 22 and 3 says, the psalmist is crying out to the Father and he says, But thou art holy, O thou that inhabitest the praises of Israel. Keeping in mind that the praises of Israel are the praises of God's people. That is who Israel is. Amen. And we know that in Romans, in chapter 11, verses 16 and 17, the scripture explains to us very plainly how that we as non-Jewish people are grafted into the body of Christ. We are grafted into Israel. Amen. And so when this scripture in Psalms 22 and 3 is read, he inhabits the praises of his people is a just thing for us to say. It's not just Israel. We are his people that are grafted into Israel, into the wild olive tree, into the olive tree as we were the wild branches. Amen. So 2 Corinthians 3.17 also says, And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. There's freedom. In this time of seclusion, every single one of us, no matter who we are, we are being attacked by the enemy. And we need to understand his devices. And able to fight him, you have to know what he's coming at you with. And it's no different than a boxing match, an, an MMA fight or a game, a football game. You have to know what your opponent is coming at you so you can have a solid defense and then be able to enact your offense to defeat him. So we want to realize today some of the main devices he is using currently are these. He is utilizing loneliness. With social distancing, the stay-at-home order that we're all dealing with, there is no way that we are not being attacked with loneliness. No, even if you're a social revert, you don't like being around people all the time anyway, you're still being attacked with loneliness. It may not affect you to the degree that it would an outgoing person that loves the crowds, but the enemy is still trying to attack all of us with loneliness right now. And we're also being attacked with a lack of self-worth. And this is due to the inability really to do anything at all because we can't do anything right now. We're on quarantine. We have to stay at home. There are, there's no stores open except grocery stores. You have to get in and out quickly. <clears throat> there's just nothing you can really do. You can't do ministry right now as far as interacting with people because of social distancing, the stay at home order. And so it just things are just upended on, and so we naturally are going to feel a lack of self-worth oftentimes because we are not feeling like we're being productive. Another thing that the, one of the greatest things we're being attacked with is fear. We're asking the questions, when will this finally be over with? When will things go back to normal? How are my finances going to be? How is my health going to be? Am I going to be protected for sure? We all have these questions. Am I going to be able to go to the store and find what I need to survive in the meantime? And we have all these questions and the root of everything that is just driving it on us is when it becomes fear, it turns into terrible worry. And fear is not of God. We know the scripture says that God has not given us a spirit of fear, but the spirit of power and love and of a sound mind. Amen. And the final product of all these things attacking us is depression. And depression is trying to attack many people right now. Not sleeping well, sleeping excessively. Um, you know, just sad, can't seem to find the joy. And so we need to know that these are attacks are on all of us right now. Some more than others, depending on who you are, but it's irrelevant, we're all being attacked right now. And we need to know how to combat this enemy. Praise God. And so to know how to combat the enemy, it is imperative. 
absolutely imperative that we return to the basics of scriptural truth in order to overcome. These attacks will only be defeated in our lives when we enter into the liberty that the Spirit of God brings. And only the Spirit of God is able to bring to us. Everyone has been taken out of the comfort zone of worship in their respective church sanctuary. And we are all confined to do so within our homes with online services such as this, with sermons, teaching, music. Everything is basically online or you do it at home. If you play your own music and sing your own songs. But everything we're doing is not in the comfort zone of the sanctuary. It's not, it's out of the ordinary for us. I know me personally, that has been something I'm not used to doing. I do worship at home. I do pray at home. I do read the word at home and all those things. But when I do so, knowing that I still have the Sunday night service, the Wednesday services, the Sunday morning, the Thursday night Haven youth, knowing I have those things to go to, those set services, it is odd for me, it's unnatural for me currently, to not have those to go to. And so I have got to learn all over again to worship even more than I already did at home in my prayer closet and in my own personal time. It's imperative that we have to do that currently. And one of the main things we have to understand, we must overcome these attacks and walk in the realization that God desires to utilize this season as an opportunity for revival. Again, not for us just to survive, but for us to thrive through the spirit of the living God. Amen. We can only operate in revival when we ourselves are daily getting in the spirit. God inhabits the praises of his people. He lives in them. He literally abides right in the atmosphere where your praises are. That's what that means when he inhabits the praises of his people, as we read in Psalms earlier. Worship is key to getting in the spirit. It's absolutely essential to get into the spirit and worship in the Holy Ghost. We must worship. What happens, the believer will begin to worship the Spirit of God lives in that atmosphere. It means He comes right in to where we are and dwells there. When He comes, the Word also teaches us that where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. We read that to you earlier in 2 Corinthians 3 and 17. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty, there's freedom. From what? There is freedom and liberty from everything that is not of God. Every attack of the enemy, every spirit of the enemy has to go where the Spirit of the Lord is. He cannot remain. Praise God. So when this freedom occurs, the Scripture, the Word of God, further manifests Himself. And Psalm 16 and 11 says, In thy presence is fullness of joy. So when we get into the presence of God through the Holy Ghost, we are entering into a level of joy that we can otherwise not experience. But in Him we do experience, and He is fullness of joy for us. Nehemiah 8 and 10 says, For the joy of the Lord is your strength. So for us to not only survive, but to thrive in this time that we're dealing with, we need to be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might, as He told us in Ephesians. Praise God. And to do so, we must maintain our level of joy in Him. Not happiness. That, that's a confusing thing. It's not happiness. It's joy. An inner joy that constantly flows through the anointing of God. It's imperative for us that we operate in three key areas of relationship to maintain that joy once we enter into it. Daily study of the Word of God, Him speaking to us. Daily prayer in the Spirit, praying in the Spirit. It's imperative that we do so. That's us sharing with Him and the Holy Ghost prays in the Spirit through us and makes intercession for us that is perfected intercession, perfected prayer, knowing exactly what we need to pray for, as Romans 8, 26 says. And it also, another thing happens when we pray in the Spirit. In Jude 1, 20, the Word of God says that we build up ourselves our most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Amen. And it's imperative that we do that because Hebrews teaches us that without faith it is impossible to please Him. So we need to maintain our faith through the word of, in the Word of God, through the Word and through the Spirit, through prayer. And then finally, the third key area is worship. As we already said, to get in the Spirit, we need to be able to worship. No matter where we are, with or without music, with or without the Word, 
of God opened up and the Bible sitting in front of us, we can still worship him. Amen. And it's imperative we do so. What happens when you worship, it's adoration. I'm giving adoration to the Lord. And as the scripture, scripture already said, he is going to pour out his adoration on me by allowing me to enter into his presence and experience fullness of joy. Amen. So those are the three key areas it's imperative that we operate in. I want to tell you quickly a story about a Chinese man of God. Several years ago, he was arrested for preaching the gospel, pastoring a church. He spent many years in this prison, a long time. And when he was miraculously rescued, I'm not getting into that part today, but when he was miraculously rescued, he was rescued by, he met immediately after one of his members, his associate pastor, he was telling him how he was in this massive sewage tank every day. And the man of God asked, the pastor said, how did you make it through, pastor? And he said, it was simple. He said, I was in worship every day and Jesus was with me every day in that sewage tank as I worked and shoveled that raw sewage. So that man of God made it through in one of the most terrible quarantines that you possibly could make. So how much greater can we make it today? We have the Lord with us, we have his word, Praise God, and the Lord will visit us every time. He is with us already. Amen. We, his children, can not only survive during this time, but we absolutely can thrive. Let's pray today. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your wonderful, exceeding, precious promises that you've given us therein, Father. We thank you for the anointing in your Holy Ghost. We thank you for your presence, Father. We ask you in Jesus' name that you would strengthen us with might by your spirit in our inner man, Lord, and make us mighty men and women of valor for you in this time, and let us show your truth forth through our lives, God, with the joy and the peace that you move through us with amongst all our neighbors, Lord. We'll give you the glory and the honor and the praise, and we praise you and thank you for the constant revival that you're moving through us with, Lord, and we thank you for the wonderful miracles and things you're doing and going to do yet. We praise you as we come to you today in Jesus' name. God bless you all.